Are you planning a migration from Oracle Linux Manager to OS Management Hub? In this video, we will cover the key details for taking an existing Oracle Linux Manager deployment and rebuilding it in OS Management Hub. As you set up OS Management Hub for the first time, please refer to the training video series on deploying OS Management Hub and refer to the Getting Started documentation. The information covered in this video supplements the normal OS Management Hub setup process for those migrating from an existing Oracle Linux Manager deployment. The key migration concepts and Oracle Linux Manager features that we'll translate into OS Management Hub are the following. Organizations as entitlements and user groups. Oracle Linux Manager servers as management stations. Collecting software channels and adding them as software sources. Identifying activation keys and creating corresponding registration profiles. Removing client systems and registering them as instances. In Oracle Linux Manager, the organization's feature defines sets of managed systems, administrators, and software entitlements. This feature is separated out into its components in OS Management Hub. In OS Management Hub, the administrator user group and its corresponding IAM policies can be used to define administrator permissions for managing OS updates inside of the tenancy and compartments. Oracle Linux Manager provides software entitlements at the organizational level, and in OS Management Hub, entitlements are added at the tenancy level. Admins would add details for restricted software sources on the entitlements page, and then those software sources would be made available. Learn more about preparing a tenancy for OS Management Hub with this video and review the Getting Started documentation. Oracle Linux Manager uses a server running Oracle Linux 7.9 to administer and act as proxy for a private data center. Additionally, a database running Oracle Database Enterprise Edition 19C is needed to act as the mirror and store software content. OS Management Hub combines these two resources into one server called a management station. Management stations require a bare metal server or VM running Oracle Linux 8.7 or later inside the private data center that houses the managed systems. The management station requires network connectivity with OCI and requires storage to act as a local mirror. Once the management station server has been created, registering the server as a management station is completed in OS Management Hub, which requires proxy configuration information and mirror configuration information. To learn more about creating and registering a management station, check out this video and review the management station documentation. In Oracle Linux Manager, systems subscribe to software channels to receive packages and errata. Each channel is associated with at least one repository, like the base OS latest, and additional child channels can be added for other packages. In this example, we have two channels, Oracle Linux 7 x86, with the child channels of latest UEK release 6 and OLM client 2.10. The other channel is Oracle Linux 8 with the latest KVM, UEK release 6, and OLM client 2.10. In OS Management Hub, these software channels and child channels are called vendor software sources and need to be added individually to OS Management Hub before they can be mirrored to managed instances. Let's recreate these channels in OS Management Hub. Navigate to Software Sources, and then at the top, click Add Vendor Software Sources. Let's start with Oracle Linux 8. Fill in the OS, OS version, and architecture, and then find and select all of the listed child channels. When done, click Add. Let's do the same thing and add the Oracle Linux 7 channel and its child channels. And when we are done, these software sources will be ready to be assigned via a profile to registered systems. Now that we've added our vendor software sources, let's collect our activation keys from Oracle Linux Manager and recreate them as registration profiles in OS Management Hub. Just like activation keys, profiles assign software sources to managed systems as they are registered. Let's recreate this Oracle Linux 8 activation key with all of its child channels and build a corresponding OS Management Hub registration profile. Navigate to Profiles and then click Create. Add a descriptive name, select a management station. This is a software source profile, but profiles can also assign managed systems to groups and lifecycle environments. Next, let's select Oracle version 8, x86, and then let's add all of the package or child channels from our activation key. When done, click Create. 
Let's find and select that profile. With this profile, we can register all of our Oracle Linux Manager managed systems that we're using the Oracle Linux 8 x86 activation key. Click View to make a copy of the registration profile contents. This content will be pasted into a profile file on the registered systems during registration. We would complete this profile building process for the Oracle Linux 7 activation key and any other activation keys or groups of client systems in Oracle Linux Manager. Prior to registering our Oracle Linux Manager client systems with OS Management Hub, the client systems will need to be deleted from the Oracle Linux Manager server and the server's cache should be cleared. We can delete them from the systems page or use these spacemd commands from a terminal into the Oracle Linux Manager server. On the client systems, the system ID file will need to be removed. Once this is complete, we can copy in registration profiles and begin to register these systems with OS Management Hub. Check out the registering instances with OS Management Hub video and review the documentation to get started. If you manage segments of client systems as groups in Oracle Linux Manager, then there are a few more steps for creating groups. Like we did earlier, collect your group's software channel builds and then in OS Management Hub, create a group and a corresponding group profile. Check out the Creating Groups video for guidance. If you intend to use lifecycle environments, collect software channel build information, create corresponding versioned custom software sources, and create the lifecycle environment. Check out the lifecycle environment videos for additional guidance.